Imagine waking up one day to what feels like the end of the world for the stock market. A huge crash liquidating all of your positions. The market is suddenly and unpredictably at a new low. But instead of weeping with those who weep or screaming with those who scream, you decide, like the wolf you are, to go hunting for stocks to buy at a discount. You start pouring your entire savings into the crash. While your friends and family think you have lost it, they believe the market has wiped out what's left of your brain. Yet, you keep fueling your buying frenzy. Surprise, surprise, the market makes a full recovery and then some and even more. But remember, we are traders at the end of the day. Long-term investing does not mean buying and holding positions for the rest of our lives. We plan our exit before our entry. So you pull out your long-term trading plan, which I will go through in this video, to review the previous crash cycles. And then time your take profit perfectly. And you wait for the next crash, like in 2020, for example. China has identified the cause of the mysterious new virus. Stock markets in the US and Europe have plummeted. It's been the worst week for equities since the financial crisis in 2008. Growing fears the virus could tip economies into recessions. The moves are exponentially greater on the downside. The COVID crash was even bigger. Okay, this time it actually felt like the end of the stock market or even life as we know it. But again, we have our plan. And because this plan has never failed us or the thousands of other professional traders that have used it in the past, you decide to buy at the bottom once again, putting all of your fears aside and trusting in the process. Boom, the market makes one of the biggest comebacks in history. And again, you sell at the absolute premium and wait for the next cycle. This is exactly how I am making millions from stocks. And it's about time I teach you this strategy. We will have a lengthy discussion on how to time those discount bottoms and how to hold our positions long enough to make incredible profits. I'm excited about this particular video because it is actually one of my favorite lessons that I teach at Online Training Campus. It's so simple, even if you have the most basic knowledge of trading, you can turn a profit from the strategy. Yes actual consistent profit. If someone had told me 12 years ago when I was just starting to trade that the answer to all my scalping problems was long-term investing, he would have saved me a year of pain. I know you're smart enough to realize this by now. And I promise you, by the end of this video, your entire perception of making money from trading is going to grow up by at least a couple of years. And it all started with this genius in the picture, Edgar Lawrence Smith. Few have a better track record of predicting the future than the relatively obscure Edgar Lawrence Smith. Don't take my word for it, this is what Warren Buffett said back in 2001. And when this guy talks, I like to listen. So I looked up Edgar Lawrence Smith. Turns out he's one of the most experienced economists and investment analysts that Wall Street has ever seen. His book, Common Stocks as Long-Term Investments, is one of the most astute and widely read books in the field of investments. Smith worked on a theory called the decennial pattern. And this is where it gets really interesting, guys, so pay attention. His argument was that stocks move in a certain recurring pattern each decade. He claimed that decades ending with sevens and zeros, like 2000 or 2007 or 2020, that is when we should expect tops. Take a look at this monthly chart right here. We have the past 30 years of stock market performance in the S&P 500. I would say this is pretty damn accurate in my books, 2020. COVID crash, 2007, housing crash, 2000, the tech bubble. You get the point. Now, let's take a look at years ending in two or three, like 2003, 2012, 
2023 or even 1992. These are the years where the stock market usually bottoms and marks the beginning of a new bull market cycle. And it repeats itself like clockwork. Now, the decennial pattern doesn't really say if we have already experienced a low at a certain time or if there's going to be another major low in the near future. It simply says there could be good buying points in the decades ending with two or three. Now, this is nothing that is going to say buy today or sell tomorrow but it gives us perspective on where we are in the bigger picture. What I find really amazing about Edgar Lawrence Smith is that he completed his work in 1938. That's 86 years ago. So each and every prediction that you see right now was forecasted decades before it materialized. It's incredible how this work is still relevant to this day. And it makes sense that this piece of knowledge is hidden from the general traders and investors. Because today's investors are drowning in all sorts of new and supposedly accurate indicators that are offered for free by brokers. Who cares about this 100 year old trading strategy, right? Well, I do, because olden is golden. Let's take a quick break here and explain why I'm only interested in the S&P 500. In order to discuss this, I need to first ask you, what's the difference between a long-term buy and hold investor and a long-term higher time frame trader? Well, first of all, the buy and hold investor, as the name suggests, buys shares and holds them for an extended period of time. His focus isn't on the micro fluctuations in price, but rather on keeping a stable portfolio over time. And since they are not affected by swaps, they can buy shares indefinitely. One of the common criticism of this method is that investors don't usually sell at optimal times. They simply can't forecast the premiums. And in order to see exponential profits, the buy and hold investor may wait for 20 or even 30 years. The buy and hold investors market analysis is all about each company's income statements, balance sheets and dividends. Basically, their secondary goal is to receive small increments of profits over time. What about the long term trader or what can also be called higher time frame trading? From a distance, it might seem like a similar concept, but instead of buying shares, we hold our positions for long periods of time and our positions typically cost more because we pay swaps. They don't. However, here's the key difference. Unlike investors, we can forecast the price premiums. So we learn how to sell at optimal prices. In addition, our long-term plan could last anywhere between one year to 20 years. And we are able to produce exponential profits during either of these timelines. I will go through that in a minute. This is actually very interesting because what a long-term trader could make in one year could surpass what the average investor does in 20 years. But first, let me tell you our key advantage, the fundamental and technical analysis that we do on the main index like the S&P 500 or the US 30 is not necessarily on each and every company that we want to go long or short. And if you guys remember, we did a thorough market prediction for the US 30 in 2024. If you haven't watched this yet, go and watch it because it will complete the picture for you. So why I'm only interested in the S&P 500? Because it's a basket of the top performing 500 companies in the US. If one company performs poorly in a year, it will automatically be replaced by another better performing company up the list. My analysis will not change. I don't need to analyze each company's balance sheet or income statements. I only need to study the overall performance of the market through fundamental and technical analysis and apply the decennial pattern on the S&P 500 monthly chart. That's it. Okay, wait, wait, I need to show you something. This clip is from a session at Online Trading Campus that was recorded back in 2021. This mentor is making a bold prediction based on the decennial pattern. 
hear what this guy says. These years could present a pretty decent longer term buying opportunity for the long term investor. So in 2022, you will hear me screaming to buy stocks for the longer term. Many months later. This mentor is actually my brother Jan and boy, what a brilliant prediction that was. The market bottomed in late 2022 and we rode that wave all the way up into mid 2023. You better bet your bottom dollar that these two brothers know how to handle business. That's less than a year of holding our positions. This brings us to the next part where we are now getting a bit into the weeds, but bear with me. In the 1970s, Yale Hirsch took the work of Smith a step further. By the way, Yale Hirsch is the same brilliant mind who introduced us to many statistically predictable market cycles, such as the presidential election cycle and the Santa Claus rally. We already analyzed the upcoming presidential election cycle in Mexico in a previous video. Watch it here. Go make a fortune from that short alone. Back to Yale Hirsch and his phenomenal work in the decennial pattern. In his work, he pointed to the fact that middle years produced some of the biggest and strongest market gains ever recorded in the history of the stock market. I took his work one step further because all of the data from him back in the 70s are pretty outdated. So I updated this table with all the data points from the last five decades and what I found was very interesting. Okay, first let me explain this table. So what you see here is 140 years of relevant data points in the S&P 500. That's 14 decades. So on the column to the left, you can see the decades. Here on the top are the years in each decade. So for example, if we need to know how did the S&P perform in 1995, for example, the fifth year in this decade, you'll find it right here. Damn, that was a good year. Here at the bottom, you can see the quantity of negative versus positive years for each year in each decade. So in all the years ending with one, we have seen four negative years and nine positive years. And finally, this last row is the performance percentage, which simply tells us how much we could have made or lost if we invested in each one of the years of the decade. We can already see some incredible patterns lining up. What is going on here in the years ending with five? That's almost 300% change in percentage. How is this possible? Well, that's exactly why Yale Hirsch called it a phenomenal five. We can actually visualize this better. Let's only plot these last three columns into a chart so we can see how each year in the decade is performing separately. The years ending with five are off the charts. Of all 14 decades, we have seen the market rallied 13 times. And the one year that appears as negative was only negative by 1%. Wow. So if you longed in a market only in the years ending with five, you're looking at an overall performance of near 300%. How powerful is that? Let's get back to our chart. Years eight and nine are also amazing. But do you remember what Mr. Smith stated at the beginning of the video? Years ending with sevens and zeros are the worst performing years, especially the ones ending with zeros like 2020 and 2000. And we all remember what happened back then. Here we have more negative years than positive ones. And the overall performance in those years alone is even negative by minus 40% and minus 20%. Really the worst time to long the market or to be an investor. And of course, like we said before, years two and three are usually bottoms in the stock market. So we see some small recovery by the end of those years. But in mid-decade specifically, the fifth year, is where stocks really take off with the best overall performance. Let's rewind a moment. Back in 2019, we knew that something is about to happen and the market had to crash. All the fingers were pointing to 2020. 
We hadn't seen a recession in 11 years and the decennial pattern confirmed that. Even if COVID didn't happen, we would have seen a crash anyway. And this was the time to sell short. Just because we are overall bullish on the S&P 500 doesn't mean we can't go short. So I was among those who predicted a crash in 2020. But, and that's a big but, the trading gurus who talk about market crashes every year, especially in the middle of the decade, Let's just say they do make me happy that they are on the losing side of my trades. But yeah, whoever does that has no understanding of stock cycles at all. And it's really simple, guys. Ask yourself, am I willing to go with a 13 versus the 1? Or am I willing to bet against the odds? It's just common sense. I never claimed cycles are perfect or that we should use them to time our positions. There are incredible tools for that, like supply and demand. But they give us perspective or a roadmap for each year in the decades to come. When you are subjected to all sorts of news, notifications and market fluctuations, nothing becomes more important in our trading than having a clear roadmap. If you like this new format for campus lessons, please let me know in the comment section. Tell me what topics you want me to discuss next. Oh, and by the way, from one long-term investor to another, one like is a big investment in this channel. Can you imagine the traders who have been following for the past year? How good are they getting? I hear great stories. Just check out the comments in those past videos to find out. Thank you, happy and safe trading.